Welcome to another episode, guys. I uh, appreciate you tuning in today. Uh, I'm here again with Josh, and we're going to be talking about OBD2 tools for your Aston Martin. Now, just before we get going, I want to give you a quick heads up that Josh and I are still a continent apart, and there might be a little bit of delay in our conversation, but hopefully that's not too bad. So how are you doing, Josh? Yeah, I'm really well. How are you? I'm doing good myself, sitting here in the shop as usual. It's a Saturday. It looks very professional where you are. I feel like I'm about to undergo a lecture from like a university lecturer. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm standing today, so you're going to see me hopping all around. So uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm looking forward to today's topic. Yeah, so that, that one thing I wanted to ask you, actually, we've been chatting about doing this podcast and we've got a long list of things that we want to cover on this podcast. But one of the things that you were quite keen on uh, discussing is the OBD2 tools. Now, um, um, is, there, is there a particular reason why you want to chat about that so much? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, in the forums, there's probably a question a day that starts something like, hey, guys, you know, I've got this you know, warning messages popped up on my dash where my car is doing this weird thing. And the thing they should be doing right away before they even post, I think, is they should be hooking up their own OBD2 tool and asking the car what's wrong with it. Um, the car's full of computers, right? I mean, I think on the, the DB9, there's something like 13 computer, uh, you know, control modules, ECUs. If you have a V12, there's two, engine control modules, transmission control module, central electronics module, the dash information module, the multimedia module, the two door modules, uh, the brake system module, and a whole bunch of others that I probably don't remember. Um, so the thing is full of computers, but they're kind of smart, right? Like, uh, I don't know if you hooked up an OBD2 tool to your car during the, the reconstruction, but they'll tell you what's going on. Did you do anything with a tool when you were uh, rebuilding your car? Yeah, I had uh, I had some problems with my MAF sensors. It actually turned out that I just didn't put the hose back on the airbox properly. But the, that, yeah. the OBD2 tool was like instrumental in fault finding that. And it, it is a thing that directed me towards the area what I should look for problems. Yeah, so rather than just going, hey, my car's running rough, you hooked up, you talked to the car, and it said, hey, I probably have a super lean condition or a mass imbalance or airflow imbalance between the airboxes or something like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that's, you know, why I, I wrote an article a little while ago that an OBD2 tool is an essential toolbox for every Aston Martin owners. Uh, if you're going to do any of the DIY, I think it's one of the things that, you know, you should be um, investing in. And so, what do you, you know, I guess we should describe maybe a little bit about what do you think an OBD2 tool is in general terms, right? Um, you've used them with other cars, you've got two. So what are they basically doing for you as a mechanic, just so I'm not doing all the talking? <laughs> yeah, so, so in essence, an OBD2 tool or diagnostics tools in general, that they are there to assist with the fault finding generally. I mean, they're not always there to discover faults. Sometimes they're there to reset service lights, interrogate modules. They're not always there for faults, but I do agree with you. They're an absolutely essential tool for anyone that is DIYing on the car. And I also think that they're an essential tool for people that aren't DIYing on the car and for people that are just interested in maybe not getting ripped off by the garage that they're going to. <laughs> and and, and I, I've found in the past as well, I've used scanning tools such as VAGCOM or VCDS for anyone that's in. I know you've got the, the golf in the background there, but for anyone that doesn't know, VCDS is like a, a Volkswagen specific tool. You can interrogate the mileage of modules. So if you've got a car that's been clocked, which basically means the mileage has been rolled back, I can check the mileage on the, the modules, what Steve was just talking about then, to make sure that they match the engine. So in that case, that would tell me that the engine's not correct or the engine's been clocked. And that, that did actually help me out in the past. So yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you. 100% essential for all owners, I, I would think, but definitely for DIY enthusiasts. Yeah, well, I... I... And another thing that uh, you can do pretty handily with an OBD tool on an Aston is it stores the VIN number and it stores the current mileage in the, the central electronics module. And it also stores the last time the OBD2 system was reset. So if I was buying a brand new Aston or a used Aston Martin, I would take a tool along with me, you know, and plug in. Yeah, because you might be sitting there in that car you're about to purchase. There's no warnings on the dash. 
You know, you might even connect in with an OBD2 tool and it goes, oh, look, there's no codes in here. But one of the things you should be checking in there was the last time, how many miles driven since the last OBD2 reset was issued to clear all the codes? Because if it was yesterday, you know somebody came in and flushed all the codes out just to make it look pristine for you. And that might be a telltale sign that they're you know, covering something up. If you sit down in a car and it has no codes and you know, it's been driven 10,000 miles since the last time it was reset, that's a really good sign, right? So there's mm -hmm. some uh, uh, really interesting information you can gather out of the, uh, the car using a tool, even if you're in a purchase mode. Um, but yeah, I've got a Volkswagen you know, over my shoulder here and I use, uh, you use the VACD, VACDS or whatever it was. I use this OBD11. Uh, it's basically a little tiny Bluetooth module and it works through my smartphone. And I, you know, I love this thing when I'm working on Volkswagen. This is kind of, you can get one of these for most models of cars. And, uh, you know, it, I think I paid maybe 200 bucks for one of these and it's, it's been terrific for the Volkswagens. But yeah, I've, I've heard some really good stuff about those OBD 11s myself. They are they're pretty powerful tools. I, I guess I guess that OBD 11 for me falls into the same category as the Foxwell diagnostic tools for the Aston Martin, whereas the VCDS is the AMDS. Yes. That's like the two contrasting sides. And depending on how deep your pockets are, depends on which one you get. Yeah, exactly. So this is, you know, a generic and aftermarket code reader that somebody's made to work with the Volkswagen specifically. But, you know, the Volkswagen granddaddy rides just to go get the one from actual Volkswagen and can do everything a dealer could potentially. So we already talked about a couple of things, you know, the, that you can do with an OBD2 tool. You can, you know, reset the service due. You can flush out the OBD2 warning messages. You can learn about the error codes that are going on. And if you have a, a decent one that you're talking to an Aston Martin with, you can even look at the misfire information. You can see if the engine's misfiring. Uh, that's a popular topic, topic in the forums. And the last thing I really like to do sometimes is I like to look at the sensor values because I was troubleshooting a lumpy idle misfire issue recently. And somebody said, well, maybe your fuel rail pressures are low. And if you're going to try to do that sort of mechanically using handheld tools, that would be kind of tricky. But with an OBD2, I just hopped in, plugged in and said, hey, what's the fuel rail pressure? And it shows it to you in real time. So there's um, these are a really good mechanics diagnosis tool, I think. Um, that really helps yeah. out a fair bit. Uh, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what's super interesting about Aston Martin specifically, though, is because they've they've all got V engines. Uh, you've always you've always got another thing to reference again. So if you're looking at a, a bad sensor, you can check the other side, for example. And and in some cars, you might only have one mass sensor. So if you if you're looking for the values of the airflow, and you're like, is that right? Is that wrong? With the Aston Martin, you can always check the other side. And check the disparity between the two and then confirm whether one's broken you might not be able to confirm which one's broken but yeah. you'll, you'll know that they're, they're so different that there's something wrong yeah compare and contrast you know we, you could potentially switch your mass airflow sensors from one side to the other also see if the problem moves over and follows the sensor but again you'd be looking at the live data right to see that that was happening and i did that very same thing i was looking at my o2 sensor performance i was watching the electrical signal I was having a misfire on one particular bank, then I moved the O2 sensor to the other bank, switched it, and then I was watching the live data over there. So just like you said, that's a great way for us to you know, maybe narrow down whether it's a sensor failure or a mechanical failure relating to you know, one particular side of the engine. Yeah. So what I wanted to do uh, was to, because uh, if the viewers are still listening to us, what they're wondering is, well, what are my options? for OBD2 tools, you know, for my Aston, maybe they don't have one already or they've got their Volkswagen one and they've discovered that maybe it doesn't work with their Aston. So I thought maybe we could sort of go through the, the array of tools that are out there. And I would start yep. with the generic. I bought my Aston and I went out and I researched generic OBD2 tools and I bought myself this Autel unit. This is a, I think an MD802 or something like that cost a few hundred dollars. It talks to Bugattis, it talks to Volkswagens, Fords. And when I got it, I was very disappointed to find out it does not talk. It is like the only manufacturer. I think it talks to like, you know, 60 different um, brands of cars, uh, category of a generic OBD2 tool. But what I did learn when I was using this tool 
was that I could, um, since the, the ECUs that are inside the Aston Martin, at least my Gaiden era, and I've got a 2005 DB9, um, they're really Ford ECUs. So I, I realized that I could pick, I could just tell this tool, hey, pretend you're connecting to a Ford three liter V6, and I would plug it into the engine port uh, on the, uh, the Aston, and lo and behold, I could at least talk and get some basic information out of uh, one of the computers. And they're not all 13, but at least one of them. So I, you know, I could get, you know, fuel rail pressure, and I can see if the misfire corrections were learned. And even with a basic tool like this, you can actually go and look at uh, if it's misfiring. Uh, you be, you don't get a graph or anything, but you get a cumulative total. So there was some value uh, using just even a you know a basic OBD tool. You have one of these in your repertoire, Josh? Yeah. Like so, so I think I think we went the exact same route, and I've got my little grab bag, which is full of the essentials for Aston Martin, and in there is, I think mine's a slightly newer one than yours. Not, not that it's better, but I think it's just I've got a more recent model. This is the NT510, I believe, um, but there's not much in them. Uh, in terms of between the models, if, if you are shopping for them, I've done a little bit of research on Foxwells and there is some additional functionality you can expect with some of the more expensive ones. But for the main part, the NT series are for hobbyists, DIY enthusiasts, and maybe people branching into the professional industry. But they, this one does come with software specifically for Aston Martins. Now, you could probably get that for yours. I don't know what you're going to go on to soon, so you probably don't need it. But um, my, my I downloaded it. NT510. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you had your Foxwell in your hand before. Yeah, no, no. I, I, I'm a OBD2 junkie. So, yeah, oh. I, I realized I couldn't do it with the Autel. And I did exactly what you did, is I went out and got myself a Foxwell. And this was my first OBD2 tool that actually could talk native Aston Martin codes. You right? know, to, to, to me, yours looked almost identical, just a slightly darker color. Do you reckon that chassis is the same? It, it looks the same to me. Pretty close. Now, both of these companies, since you're mentioning that, uh, I looked up where Autel's factory was, and it's somewhere in one of the cities in China. I looked up where the Foxwell factory was, and I swear it's on the same block. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if you know these two companies uh, or one company's manufacturing and sticking two different brands on them. But well, my my, my Foxwell looks identical to your Autel. It's just a different color. So I wonder if we put my my memory card in yours, whether it just operate the same or. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know, you, but going out and getting a Foxwell really was the next step, right? You know, when I realized a, a, a generic that couldn't talk to Aston, you know, I was keen to find one that could talk to more of the computers. And however they did it, you know, Foxwell went out there and they figured out how to uh, get the actual Aston Martin bespoke special codes. And talk that Aston Martin language to the car and all the different computers. So it talks. Probably to just did a little bit of research and found out every module that Aston Martin had stolen from other cars. <laughs> yeah, and they're in China, so you know, uh, trademark and copyright infringement and stuff probably wasn't bothering them while they were reverse engineering an AMDS. I bet. Um, yeah, no doubt. But you know, it's uh, quality-wise. I think the uh, you know my Foxwell has been pretty decent. It's you know it's a it's a made in China product. Um, I bought it online. I think I got mine off Amazon. Where did you get yours? From the Foxwell site or from Amazon? Yeah, I got it from the Foxwell site. And, and I don't think it was too much. I think it was about £150, roughly. Um, yeah. I should have got that figure beforehand. But I'll put it up on the screen if it's any different. But I think for this sort of stuff, you just have to plug this in once to fault find, and you've already saved your money there. Oh, yeah, um, totally. This, this is You can do the oil service reset with this one. Uh, you can uh, uh, talk to the, if you have the V12, you can talk to both the engine modules. Uh, they don't have the exact same data in them, right? Some, uh, they have a little bit of unique data in the different ECUs. You talk to the brake module, you can talk to the central information module. There's all, you can talk to pretty much everything. Um, and, you know, if I'm, uh, You'd ask me, you know, a few years ago, I'd say, this is it. This is the essential tool that every DIY Aston Martin guy needs to go get. It's a good price and can do just about all the tricks we need to, to do. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's great that you've got the same one. Um, 
So what, one thing that caught me out with, with this and with the Aston Martin specifically is the two plugs that you've got in an Aston Martin. Now, <laughs> like I say, my background just generally come from VWs. I've never experienced that before. Uh, I don't know whether it's a luxury car thing or whether it's an Aston Martinism, but have you experienced the two plugs before? Oh, yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a confusing thing worth mentioning, right? So on my Aston Martin, there is a, a powertrain port and a body port. So when you want to talk to the ECUs for the engine, you plug into the powertrain port. When you want to talk to all the different other modules other than the engine module, so if you want to talk to a door module or a seat module or uh, the central electronics module, you have to plug the box well in on the body port. So that's the body communication bus. So I'm not sure why Aston did that, but we have two OBD2 connectors under the dash and they have labels on them that say body or powertrain. Uh, so you gotta be careful which one you're hooking up to. Uh, so do you scan yours the exact same way when you plug it in? Cause I know I've got to do something different uh, with this one to scan uh, my body port in comparison to my powertrain port. I think when I hook it up and I say, I want to talk to, you know, the central electronics module, it just warns me I need to remember to hook up to the body module. Um, at least with the firmware that I've got in this particular box well. So I, I did see that Aston Martin themselves do have a, a Y split cable that plugs into both ports and then comes into one. And I, and I do believe someone is actually selling them on the DIY group. Uh, I'm not sure how legit they are or how much you'd really want to plug them in. That's not an endorsement by any means. Well, but speaking of I'm endorsement, assuming... you, neither you or I are getting paid by Foxwell or any of these companies to talk about any of these products. We've just stumbled across these oh, on yeah. our own. I wish, but if Foxwell want to send me a better one, then feel free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, you know, a basic NT510 or 530, like you said, there's a bunch of different modules, but as long as it's an NT series and says it can talk to Aston Martin, I think, you know, you're off to a good start with one of these guys. And uh, and, and I know I were about to go into it before, before we got a little bit mistaken on um, on what, what one you had in your hand and what, what one I had in my hand. Uh, the NT series for if you're if if the viewers are shopping for one of these for their own car um there's not really much in them so for a diy enthusiast i would i would probably say the nt 500 series are probably your best bet so 510 520 530 you've got beyond that you're probably going to be paying for utility that you're not going to use however there, there is additional functionality to the to the bigger ones but i think for the most part they're probably not going to be used but i don't know what your take is on that but i see that you've got an nt 500 series there so i'm assuming you came to the same conclusion as me Oh yeah, yeah, no, uh, just the basic ones doing, you know, plenty for me. The only sort of uh, complaint I have about the unit is that I see in the forums that, because uh, when you get them, they're deaf and dumb, right? They, they, they don't have the Aston Martin codes in them yet. So people kind of get, they just rip it out of the box, they go to use it and they realize that suddenly the, there is no option for Aston Martin on here. You have to do a little step. If you just follow the instructions, there's a little flash card in here that you, uh, or you can plug into your computer. You have to load the Aston Martin stuff into the, the actual unit. So you go over to the website, you register the unit, you say, hey, yeah, I, I want to use an Aston Martin set of codes, and it shoots them into the device. So that's one place I see people getting tripped up with the Fox rolls. They don't initialize it right when they get it out of the box. That's exactly how I tripped up. I pulled it straight <laughs> out. I, I ordered it online. I ticked the box that said Aston Martin. I just thought it was going to happen, but they, like you said, you need to put the software on. Um, there's some there's some alignment with the serial number of the unit you bought, which allows you to download that software for your particular device. But yeah, I, it took me a couple of days to figure that out. I'm like, this cord reader is crap. Yeah, <laughs> and then you realize it, it into the other port. Yeah, and, and their response is, "This user is crap." <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, all user error. But it is a little bit strange, and that's the other thing to explain is that. Um, even though this is an excellent code reader for Aston Martin, if you have a second car in your fleet, like a Volkswagen or a BMW or something, this could talk to them, but they want to charge an extra fee. You would go and tick another box, BMW or Volkswagen Group, and they'll take you know a reasonable, I think it's like 20 or $30 more, and they'll add a second manufacturer's model line to it. I believe they even sell this unit maybe for like an extra hundred bucks they'll just turn on every manufacturer. Um, so if you yeah, find- Yeah, so I, I think with my one, I got a lot enabled, but nothing like, nothing to, to sing up, to write home about. It, it was just, 
very basic cars for what European European diagnostics would be. Yeah. Um, but then any additional to that, I, I had to pay for the file. So mine can plug into my BMW and Volkswagens and any, and any other vehicles like that. But uh, although it did plug into the Aston, it just didn't give me very much. And then when right. I got the software, I realised yeah. how much yeah. different it were. Yeah, it's just it's a generic OBD too, kind of like my Autel unit until you add the the Aston uh, code set to it. So mm -hmm. you could turn this box wheel into the one tool for all your cars at home. Um, but then I was using this one and then I discovered this one. So this is uh, a tool I did a video on a little while ago. This is a Think Diag and I was, uh, it's a Bluetooth one. So you run an app on your phone. This also talks native Aston Martin codes, but it does even more tricks. This uh, starts to, bridge into the point where it can do things that an AMDS can, the Aston Martin dealer system. You can actually program uh, the car to learn a new key. You can program the car to learn a new key fob. Uh, you can uh, do some graphing. You can certainly look at the misfire data. It's all through a sort of a fancier user interface on your phone. Um, these are uh, also quite inexpensive. I think this one might be less than 150 US dollars. Um, you can buy this online from Amazon. And uh, the, so this thing is great. Honestly, it, it's made in China as well. Uh, so the user interface, oh. the, the, the app on the phone is a little goofy in the wording and stuff, but it, it's, it's easy enough to figure out. Um, and it's about 98% reliable. Like sometimes I launch the app and it won't talk to the car. I just close the app, unplug this thing, plug it in again, relaunch the app, and it works perfect the next time. So, you know, it's a $150 kind of device, um, but it does more tricks than the Foxwell. And using the user interface on the phone to me is actually an improvement. Um, I like, you can record codes, you can research the code, the, the error code that you're getting right there. Um, you can even save all the codes as, you know, at a point in time. Uh, so there's some really nice features from that. The only part about this thing that sucks, though, is this is a subscription service. You buy it, and you turn on Aston Martin codes, and then a year from now, they want another $30. And a year from then, they want another $30. So as far as I know right now, there isn't a lifetime activation. So you're kind of going to keep paying for this. So the Foxwell is a uh, better overall value but you know, if you want the advanced features that this does, uh, this can even read the Aston Martin car config file, just like an AMDS. So you could go in and it'll tell you every feature that's turned on in your car. You can't change them, but you can do uh, some really amazing tricks. Have you ever seen one of these, Josh? So I've actually come across the Bluetooth ones in the past, and, and I did come across that when I was searching for my Foxwell. Um, but I don't know if I've told you in the past, but for the viewers that I haven't told, I used to have a Mark 1 TT as a track car. So a Mark 1 Audi TT. And with the way that I stripped that out, the, the plan was to have a Bluetooth or OBD um, plug-in like that mounted and, and a tablet mounted in the center, and then I could display data. But at, at the time when I was looking for them, they were never that reliable. I think the app that I was going to use was called Tort. Uh, and it, yeah, it, it was all right, but it was just a little bit roper. It was like it was like someone had made it in the, in the shed or the little <laughs> home office. Um, so that's the reason why I didn't go down the Bluetooth route because I just associate it with that. But after seeing what you've said about that, and because I, I, like I say, I've got my little grab bag that that goes everywhere, and maybe this is a topic for for another video, like must must have things to have in your Aston. Um, this takes up quite a lot of it, and that looks a lot more appealing to go in my yeah. little bag. Yeah, and I just actually, took behind the seat and forget about. Yeah, I actually keep this. This is one of the few things that will fit in a DB9 glove box. Uh, I've got my owner's manual in there, and I have this tucked in right beside it, so I can actually take this with me, and I do. I have a microfiber towel, and I have this, and that's it. Um, well, actually, I guess I have one other thing. I have a barf bag for my passenger in case I'm driving a little uh, hard through the turns. <laughs> 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 Anyways, the, you know, I'd... I'd say these are worth checking out. They're also a fairly low dollar, you know, experiment, right? And so boom, does, does, I'm assuming that works as an OBD tool for all the other vehicles as well then? Yeah, you can, again, if they license it kind of like the Foxwell, you can get just the Aston codes or you can get like multiple manufacturers and they, they ding you a little differently on when you turn on the, 
you know, the particular product. And you can go back and add and remove them too. They just, in the app on the phone, you just say, hey, I want to add BMW to it. And they'll take a few dollars out of your pocket. I think it's like 20 bucks. And they'll add that to the, to the feature set. So you mentioned about, you know, having a Bluetooth that you just maybe leave even plugged into the OBD2 port. That's a mistake with one of these. Um, these things are a parasitic draw. And so these things will sit there and suck power away constantly, on, at least on my car. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. Yeah. I'm familiar with that because some some trackers in the UK go into your OBD port um, and yeah, they, they suck it. On on that front with a, with a TT, I obviously had an isolator switch because it was a track vehicle. So that was not a problem for the race car, but definitely worth mentioning anything left plugged into your OBD port will yeah. kill your battery yeah. in rapid yeah. succession. Yeah, quickly. It'll, it'll probably be good by morning. Um, so... Uh, so these are something you can experiment with. And this probably is, as far as an aftermarket OBD2 tool, this is the one that gets closest to what you can do with an AMDS. But you might be asking, how would you know it, it gets that close? Well, you didn't even know I had one of these, but there it is. The official uh, Aston Martin AMDS, it's obviously not moving up right now, but this is a full on, you know, uh, hardened laptop computer. And, you know, there's software that runs on this that's important, but you were talking about, you know, the dual ports. One of the most critical parts of an AMDS is this other collection of cabling. It has a two head uh, OBD2 connection. They're labeled for power train and body. And then it has this communication interface that hooks up by USB to the AMDS box. This is called a VCI, field communications interface. And this is the secret sauce. Um, you need to have you know, these things to basically work with that software on that laptop to um, you know, talk to your car and do all the things uh, you know, that you could do with a dealer one. So uh, I was pretty impressed you know, that the, um, the Think Diag could actually do a lot of the things that the, uh, the AMDS could at least. So um, I think everyone's gonna wanna know the answer to this. Where did you get AMDS from? Uh, I asked Santa and he brought me one. <laughs> and I, it literally was a Christmas present one year, but um, uh, tracking these down is near impossible. Uh, I basically, you can tell I'm a bit of a, uh, an OBD2 or, you know, I'm, I'm out, you know, searching for all the tools that I can to work with my car. But uh, so I knew that the ultimate score would be to try and track one of these systems down. Um, I think you can, you can probably go to Aston and actually buy one. So if you were an independent specialist, but they are, I think they're on the order of like $20,000 US if you're gonna go and actually yeah, buy so one. Yeah, I, so I, I actually inquired. So going back to the story, I asked him when I, when I got the warranty looked at, because basically when I, when I got it um, finished, I realized it had warranty. So I took it to Aston and I did discuss with the technicians in there how I might be able to get some official diagnostic systems and they said, yeah, they'll sell it to me, but it was a hefty premium. I think you're about right with that price, which on that, like that is, that is almost removing the right to repair. That is, that is so stupidly expensive. It's, I can't, I can't understand how it costs that much to manufacture or produce, but I feel like that might be a little bit of a digger, any independent specialist trying to get into the game. Oh yeah. Uh, and, well, and all for, of that. <laughs> for, for sure. I think, you know, they're, they're putting the barrier there so that, you know, the local shops are, really gonna have to do a lot of volume with Aston to justify a $20,000 tool. And this is not a DIY tool. You've got to sit down and actually learn how to use the software for a bit too, or, um, uh, you know, there was actual, you know, manuals on how to use the AMDS. It's taken me take, spending time with that, me getting advice from other Aston Martin technicians that are, you know, used to working with the AMDS, how to, how to utilize the tool. It's pretty straightforward kind of once you're familiar with it. Um, but how I got it was, um, I just kept my ear to the ground. You know, I'd watch eBay. I would, you know, I would watch all the sites I could think of that, where one of these might pop up for sale. I was, you know, subscribed in the forums all over the place. And, uh, uh, eventually I lucked out and I found a, a dealership in Europe that was closing and, uh, they were closing their, you know, getting rid of their Aston Martin brand and they were turfing off all of their tools. And I was able to basically buy this used, you know, from uh, 
uh, from a dealer that was actually shutting down. So it still cost a chunk, but um, substantially less than you know the Aston Martin price. Um, and now that uh, Aston has moved on to uh, their next generation of cars, the DB11s, the DBX, and the Mercedes powertrains, they aren't using the original AMDS for that anymore. So uh, if you were to get an AMDS now, a used one, and if it was at least up to date recently, uh, I don't think there's going to be any evolution of the AMDS software much at this point, because now they're working on AMDS2, which is the, you know, the Mercedes platform stuff. Uh, yeah, so and, you, and on that front as well, that's going to remove all, all usability like this in the future, because to, to my knowledge, what I've been told is that AMDS2 is all network connectivity dependent. So any offline systems like the one you've got would probably get disabled as soon as they realize it's out of the hands of a, an authorized dealer. Um, yeah. So and yeah, keep a, keep a hold of that. Yeah, I and mean, that's it. I think I saw Mike from Bamford Rose was uh, talking about that as well. That they're, you know, they made it just about impossible then for an independent to, you know, get their hands on and work with an AMPS too, which might be motivation, which kind of a deterrent if you're a DIY guy and you're going to buy yourself a, uh, a new generation DB11 or Vantage and plan on doing some of the stuff yourself. You're going to even be more snookered than our generation of dating cars. Uh, but, you know, th this is the, you know, I'm spoiled. This is the tool I use for most of the things now in my car. Uh, like when I was diagnosing the, um, the O2 sensor, there are some great tools in here for, you know, watching all the O2 sensors and all the, you know, rich lean mixture stuff all happening at once because uh, they built those tools for the dealership. Um, so if you can get your hands on I did on see one, someone making copies oh. of those as well like not that i'm endorsing making illegal copies which i definitely am not but i did see that someone had actually made a made a copy of that tool and uh and they're still charging an extortionate price um but i guess that's just reflective of how much it is to buy <laughs> if, yeah. if you want a genuine copy well i think if you were determined right you all the amds software is is just a presentation of the, uh, the data that you can get out of the Foxwell or the other tools. Um, it's just, you know, a piece of code. The, you know, some of the magic though is this VCI that enables it to talk to both, you know, buses and all the computers at once. But as you mentioned, the, somebody in the forums is trying to make a Y cable to make that possible as well, which is maybe replicating a bit of what the VCI does. So uh, I look forward to seeing what people come up with, you know, to so we could dig around inside the, you know, the computers in our cars. They're, no, there's like I said, there's 13 of them. We've got to be able to talk to them to know what's broken, right? Otherwise, you're just staring yeah. at a black box and you're like, well, I don't know. Uh, how am I going to figure it out? So some sort of tool I think is required uh, uh, to be a decent you know, DIY mechanic with your own Aston Mark. You know, where, where there are ranges from a generic all to the Foxwell to the Think Diagra all the way to an AMDS. Um, but you know, if I was just jumping in, I would certainly get a Foxwell or um, a Think Diag. And you know, you probably could do just about everything with those tools uh, until you needed something else. And then if you need AMDS once in a blue moon, take your car to the dealer. You know what? It's cheaper than buying, you know, if you're only gonna do it once, you know, every five years you need something done, uh, you know, let the dealer do it for you and it'll cost you a couple hundred bucks extra. And uh, but I'll least, bring you a crate of beers. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. People ask to borrow this thing from me all the time. And, you know, politely the answer is no, because I can't replace it if it gets broken, right? I can't, you know, if the, uh, the VCI dies, that's it. I'm, I'm stuck. I can't go and get a replacement unit. So, um, but, you know, I respect Aston Martin. You know, I love being able to use the tool like this and do videos and, you know, help educate other, you know, owners and what they're doing with their cars. And, uh, uh, but I, I'll, I'll never do the video that, in a way that you have to have an AMDS to figure out what I'm telling you. You know, it'll always be done, you know, doing it with something that all of us can go out and purchase. Yeah, that's a good idea because that, that video will be fit for all of like three people that would watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, that, you know, that's, I think there's actually room for a video series here too. Um, that there's a lot of people have OBD2 tools but they're not familiar with what to do with them once they're using them, right? They know to plug in, they get a code. We see screenshots on the forums every now and then. So my advice for if you're using a tool and you've got, say, a, you know, a, 
a P301 code. Well, uh, you could Google search that. Um, I can point you over to, I have the entire series of all the Aston Martin bespoke codes posted on my Aston 1936 website. I have a, an OBD2 codes web page for it where they're all there. And on that same page, um, I have a link to the official Aston Martin uh, OBD2 codes guide. And that guide actually tells you, you go in there, look up a P300 or 301, it'll tell you, oh, you have a misfire on cylinder one. And check this, then check this, then check this, then check this. It's actually what the technicians would be using as their, here's the steps to follow if that code's been found. Um, you know, that I didn't buy that guide. That guide's been floating around on the internet forever. So I have it posted there right on my webpage for uh, OBD2 codes. So do your research. Don't just go straight to the forum and go, hey, has anyone ever seen this? Put a little bit of effort into it and take a look at the webpage, see what it says. Because it, just like you with your map sensor, it probably will give you enough of a clue that you can probably just go out and take a look at the problem and you don't have to ask everybody else on the forum unless you're stumped. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think on the forum, there's a, there is a rule that is, there's no such thing as a stupid question, but there is, a, there is being laser. Uh, so, so definitely do your, do your due diligence and, and you'll, you'll get rewarded with helpful people for that. But I tell you what, there is such thing as a stupid answer. And whenever I see a picture of a warning light and someone comments a very specific problem. So let's say you've got the engine warning light on and someone straight away is like, your your left side catalytic converter has failed like that that can never be the answer to that like this these lights in certain sequences and when they flash or when they're up together they can all mean a hundred different things at once and that's why the diagnostics tools are so important um they're definitely definitely worth the weight in gold but they do they do take a lot of research and a lot of learning about that area to, to understand it fully but i yeah. guess that's what the community is there for so we can all assist with that well that one we see all the time on the forums is the dreaded emission service required you know um, warning and just like you said that can be many many different things uh, so uh, i don't think anyone could give you advice without having a diagnostic tool hooked up there are actual aston martin technicians in the diy group and they'll usually respond and go look it can be a b c d e or f You've got to get in there with a tool and do some more diagnosis. Um, but you could get yourself a tool and do that. And you know, I think, yeah, and, I think and just just even even one of the cheap tools would would give someone in that forum just enough of a steer to point you in the right direction. Um, but yeah, absolutely, pictures of warning lights and and even pictures pictures of basic chords. They just do do require a little bit more deeper diving than than maybe first anticipated. Yeah. But you know, there is no stupid question. Um, do your homework and ask them. And uh, uh, you know, one of the things I think I've got a little bit of inspiration for doing is probably over on my site, eventually I'll do a series of videos on how to actually use your OBD2 tool to do uh, a number of tasks. I think I've done them on how to reset the oil service due indicator. Um, but I think one that's probably calling begging to be done is how to use your OBD2 tool to check for misfire corrections, because I see people uh, stumbling on that, or not misfire, misfire corrections and looking for live misfire data, right? Actually seeing if you're any misfiring. And that's, yeah, it's not very hard, but it, so, so you gotta go to different areas of the code of the tool and to do that. So um, maybe someday in the future, I'll do one of those and post that up on the blog and we can, uh, you know, people can take advantage of that. Well, that'd be super interesting. I definitely look forward to reading that. So Steve, I think that uh, wraps it up for today. Without going in too deep, um, we've definitely covered quite a quite a large topic there and there's definitely more to talk about in the future. But I hope the viewers are still with us. And if you are still with us, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you are still with us and you want us to talk about something else in the next topic, uh, then do let us know because we, we have a big long list of ideas, but ultimately it's what you guys want that's going to make the cuts. Um, so let us know. And if you've not already, go over to Steve's channel and subscribe to him. And if you're not already subscribed to me, then please do. Steve mentioned his website in the video where you can find all the diagnostics codes. So that is definitely where you need to be to research any problems that you might have with your vehicle. Thanks for watching the video, guys. And I'll catch you in the next one. See you later, Josh. See you later.